Okay, so we're going to do an example of a problem that is dealing with Newton's third law, which states for every action force, there's an equal but opposite reaction force. So in this case, two hockey players are facing each other on the ice. Player one pushes on player two with a force of 34.4 Newtons towards the right. And we want to find the acceleration of each of the players. We're going to make the assumption that there is no friction in this case. So we've got a simple diagram which is showing, here's player one, here's player two, mass of player one is 87.4 kilograms, mass of player two is 102.6 kilograms, and this is representing the ice down below. So we have the force of our push which is player one pushing on player two with a force of 34.4 newtons. What we need to realize is that this push right here of 34.4 newtons will have an equal and opposite reaction force from player two pushing back with 34.4. So when we go to do our free body diagram, even though player one is pushing on player two, the force on player one is due to the reaction force. So let's make our free body diagrams. So free body diagram again, has minimal detail and shows all forces acting on the object, arrows pointing out. So here's player one. There is the simple box to represent the person's mass, so 87.4 kilograms. We have acting downwards gravity, which is Fg, which is equal to mass times gravity. 87.4 kilograms times 9.80 newtons per kilogram, which gives us 856.52, and we've got newtons. There is our Fg. This is also known as your weight. So that's gravity acting downwards because we're standing on the ice and we are not moving vertically. We can say that the normal force, which is the ice pushing back up, is going to be the same number but in opposite direction. So 856.52 Newtons. So what you'll notice is the gravitational pull downwards and the normal pushing upwards are the exact same magnitude but opposite in direction. Again, that's also a Newton's third law. Now, player number one was pushing towards the right with a force of 34.4 Newtons, but the reaction force of player number two means that the applied force on player number two is actually 34.4 newtons towards the left. So we have gravity down, we have normal up, those two forces are balanced, so the only unbalanced force acting on our object is the applied force of 34.4 newtons towards the left. This is 34.4 newtons towards the left. Our mass is 87.4 kilograms, and we are actually looking for the acceleration of player number one. So there's all our variables listed. The equation is F net equals mass times acceleration, and these are with subscripts one. So this is 34.4 newtons towards the left. The mass, 87.4 kilograms and we are solving for A1. So now we're into doing just some math. So we want to divide both sides by 87.4 kilograms. And when we do that, we get the 87.4 kilograms canceling with top and bottom on the right-hand side. And then we are left with on the left-hand side, 34.4 divided by 87.4, which will give us an acceleration. But if we look at the beginning question at the top, okay, we have three sig digs, three sig digs. This can only go to three significant digits, which 
which would be 0 0.394 meters per second squared towards the left. Now for player number two. Free body diagram, just like we did with the first one, which gives us 1,005.48 newtons. And just like with the first talkie player, the force down, which is gravity, and the force of the ice pushing back up, need to be equal magnitude. We know that the normal force is also 1,005.48. And the only other force acting on it was that applied force from the original push was 34.4 newtons and in this case the direction is to the right. So it is the same amount of force happens to be in the right direction now but because this is a slightly larger hockey player we should find that the acceleration is going to be smaller. So this would be M2 for player 2 Acceleration to Okay, and just like we did with the last one, divide both sides by the player's mass. And on the right hand side, the masses cancel off. And on the left hand side, we are left with two proper sig digs. Point three three five meters per second squared. And if you remember, the previous one gave us the acceleration of player one which was 394 meters per second squared, but this was to the left. So this makes sense. Player one had less mass, which means they should have a slightly larger acceleration. Now that we've done that, we can also figure out how fast are they going to be moving after the push is done. So there will only be acceleration as long as they're in contact. So, we're going to list all of the variables for player one. They were initially with a velocity of zero. We are trying to determine what their final velocity is. The acceleration of player one was 0.394 meters per second squared to the left. And if they are in contact for 0 0.980 seconds, that's our time interval, which will be V2 equals V1 plus AT. Zero. Acceleration was 0.394. Time interval, 0 0.980. Multiply this together. And we get a final speed of 0.386 meters per second towards the left. And if there is no friction between the player and the ice, they should continue with that velocity. Player 2, and it is the exact same calculation, just slightly different initial conditions. So this is V1, which is 0. V2 is what we're looking for. Acceleration of player 2 was 0.335 meters per second squared to the right. And the time interval is still 0 0.980 seconds. And we're using the exact same kinematic equation. Plug in our variables and solve. Acceleration is 335. The time interval is 0 0.980. So 
So the final velocity of player two will be 0.328 meters per second towards the right. So if we just compare these two values, we have a lighter hockey player that after the interaction will be moving at 0.386 meters per second towards the left, and player two, which had more mass, will have a slightly smaller velocity in the opposite direction. So there is a method of solving for two objects that are pushing off each other with zero friction.